Ingenious versus Ubiquity. Which of these access points gives you the best overall throughput and bang for your buck? Well, let's find out. Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris, and in this video, we're gonna be pitting five different Ingenious and Ubiquity access points against each other and putting them through their paces to figure out which ones have the best benchmark scores. Before we get to our contenders though, if you guys enjoy this kind of content, make sure you give the video a like, it really helps out the channel, and also click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. Also remember to follow us on Twitter, at CrosstalkSOL, and if you guys are interested in buying me a beer, the link for that is also down in the description. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the benchmark testing. Contender number one is the Ubiquity UAP AC Pro. This is kind of the old standard access point. I have deployed literally hundreds of these. The price on this access point is $147.99. This is a three by three MIMO 802.11 AC, that's Wi-Fi 5 access point. The UAPAC Pro has two one gigabit ethernet ports and for the antenna configuration, it's got a three dBi antenna in both the 2.4 and five gigahertz spectrum with transmit power of 22 dBm also in both of those spectrums. Next we have the Ubiquity Nano HD. Now the one that I show on the screen here is black because these access points have a variety of different skins that you can pop onto them. This one does not have a skin. The MSRP on this access point is $179. It is a, also Wi-Fi 5. So this is an 802.11 AC Wave 2 4x4 multi-user MIMO access point. Uh, it has one gigabit port and for antennas it has two 2.8 dBi antennas in the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band and two 3 dBi antennas in the 5 gigahertz band. The transmit power on this guy is 23 dBm in the 2.4 gigahertz and 26 dBm for 5 gigahertz. All right, our next contender is the Ubiquity U6 Lite. This is the first Wi-Fi 6 access point on our list. MSRP for this access point is $99. This is actually the Nano HD because I'm using the U6 Lite here in my own house. Uh, but the U6 Lite features 802.11 AX 2x2 multi-user MIMO and OFDMA, which is Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. I had to look that up. Okay, so... Uh, it features one gigabit port in the back, and it has a 2.8 dBi antenna in the 2.4 gigahertz range and a 3 dBi antenna in the 5 gigahertz range. The transmit power of this device is 23 dBm in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. All right, next we have the Ingenious EWS 850AP. This is an IP67 rated outdoor access point. The price is $329.60. I recently did a review of this access point on the channel. Make sure you go check that out if you get a chance. Uh, this is an 802.11 AX, that's Wi-Fi 6, 2x2 multi-user MIMO access point. Also has OFDMA. It features one 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on the bottom of the device. And for antennas, you can see that it has basically four antennas. It's got two 5 dBi antennas in the 2.4 gigahertz and two 5 dBi antennas in the 5 gigahertz range. And for transmit power, we're looking at 23 dBm for 2.4 gigahertz and 25 dBm for 5 gigahertz. Finally, we have the Ingenious ECW230 coming in at a whopping $499. At least that's the price on CDW as well as Streakwave. This is a Wi-Fi 6 802.11 AX 4x4 multi-user MIMO and OFDMA access point. It has one 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and it has two 3 dBi antennas in both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. The transmit power of this access point is 23 dBm, also in 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. All right, so there we have the five access points that I tested for this video. Let's take a look at the testing methodology. I essentially ran three different types of tests against all of these access points. And then I sort of distilled those tests down to a single average megabits per second. 
So here's the testing environment. We've got the internet coming into a Ubiquiti UDM Pro, which then goes out to this USW Pro 24 port switch, which is connected to each of the access points in turn. Each of the access points was placed up on the wall above my head here in the exact same location so that I wasn't moving things around. And all of the clients that were connecting to these access points were also all connecting from the exact same locations. The first set of tests that I did were simple iPerf tests running against this TrueNAS server that's sitting right behind me that is 10 gigabit connected to the network. We don't want this server to be any sort of bottleneck against the wireless testing. That's why we have it connected at 10 gigabits. For the second test, we used open speed tests running in a Docker container on my QNAP QGD 1600P sitting in this cabinet right here. And we basically just ran speed tests on the local network uh, using open speed test. For the final test, I use a combination of Windows Copy as well as Ansible for the Ubuntu clients to fire off a download, a simultaneous download between all four of these Wi-Fi 6 connected clients against this NAS where they were all, they were all downloading huge files simultaneously, right? So basically just maxing out the total sustained throughput that we could get from these devices. And so what I did is I started that download, I waited about two or three minutes so that we sort of leveled everything out, and then I took a, an average measurement over about a minute's worth of time, and then took those average among all four clients to distill that down into a single megabits per second. For our test clients, we have a wide range of operating systems as well as system specifications. We have one Ubuntu 20.04 machine that's an old school AMD A43420. We have my personal desktop, which is Windows 10 and an Intel i7-8700K. Up in my attic, right through the walls, through the rafters, we have a, an old school Intel i5-4690K running Ubuntu 20.04. And then in the next room over, I have a brand new Lenovo 10th gen Intel i5 also running Windows 10. And every single one of these clients has Wi-Fi 6 capability, whether it's built into the motherboard or if it is a separate uh, Intel AX200 based Wi-Fi 6 card. All right, let's take a look at the iPerf 3 testing methodology. Here we have the six different iPerf commands. Now I ran each of these commands three times on each of the four clients to get an average number for each command. I then distilled that down into the average megabits per second per client. And then I distilled it down even further where I took the average of the averages, right? So all four clients each had their own separate averages and uh, that came down to a distilled number, basically a distilled average of all iPerf testing across all clients for each different access point. And here is what we ended up with. So coming out on top was the EWS 850 AP from Ingenious. This access point is that outdoor two by two multi-user MIMO access point, And it ended up at about 350 megabits per second in the combined averages of iPerf testing. Coming in to, with a close second was the U6 Lite. So that's the two by two multi-user MIMO, very similar setup to the EWS 850AP. But I think the EWS 850AP has a little bit better gain on the antennas, plus it has these antennas external, which I think kind of just gave it the edge in this test. Third place was the Nano HD 4x4 multi-user MIMO Wi-Fi 5, which beat out, believe it or not, the ECW230 from Ingenious, which is a 4x4 multi-user MIMO Wi-Fi 6 access point. The difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5, of course, has less to do with speed to any sort of individual client, and it has more to do with aggregate speed across multi-clients in a dense environment. Finally, at the bottom of the pack, we had the UAP AC Pro with a combined iPerf speed test of just over 200 megabits per second. And that is the Wi-Fi 5 3x3 MIMO access point. Next, let's take a look at our open speed test methodology. Basically, I ran speed test against open speed test from every single one of these clients. I ran that three times and then took the average upload and download for every single client. And then I averaged out the upload and download to get my distilled metric that I used for the final benchmark. 
And here is what we came up with. In the iPerf speed testing tests, the U6 Lite uh, blew the doors off of everything else, right? So it came in at about 450 megabits per second. Uh, the EWS 850AP was just over 400 megabits per second. Followed up by the third place Nano HD. Fourth place, once again, was the Ingenious ECW 230 4x4 multi-user MIMO Wi-Fi 6 access point. And then finally, we had the UAP AC Pro in third place with just about 240 megabits per second. The third set of tests that I ran were the sustained throughput tests. Essentially, we fired off a large download simultaneously to all four of my test clients. We waited about two or three minutes for that download to stabilize across the four clients, and then we basically looked at the average speed that we were getting uh, for those sustained downloads. And then we added up the sustained throughput for all four of the clients to get our total throughput metric. And so here we have the results of the sustained throughput test. And surprisingly, the Wi-Fi 5 4x4 multi-user MIMO Nano HD jumped to the head of the pack on this test, right? It got over 300 megabits per second worth of sustained throughput to the four client test devices. Second place was the Ingenious uh, EWS 850AP, followed again by the U6 Lite, followed again by the UAPAC Pro, and then surprisingly, this was to me the biggest shock of all of these tests, the $499 4x4 multi-user MIMO Wi-Fi 6 ECW230 access point from Ingenious had the worst sustained throughput. And believe me, I ran this test multiple times because it didn't seem like I was getting the correct results, but I tested the ECW230, got the results that I got, then I took this access point down and I put the Nano HD in its place and I tested again right after I was testing this one. So literally same day, same test environment, same everything, and the Nano HD, as you can see, was uh, about two and, a t two and a half times faster on the sustained throughput than the ECW230. So all of that being said, you kind of get some variance in which access points were uh, excelling at these different tests. Uh, so how do we come up with a final benchmark? Well, again, this is not entirely scientific, but what I ended up doing is I took the final results from each of these three tests. So that sort of distilled megabits per second for each of the three tests, and I averaged that number across the three tests to come up with the final benchmark score, or what we're calling the crosstalk access point benchmark. And here are our final benchmark results. So coming out on top, uh, when we did the megabits per second average for our iPerf 3 open speed test and sustained throughput testing, the ingenious EWS 850AP had the best overall average megabits per second across all of our testing, followed shortly by the Ubiquiti U6 Lite. So this one came in at 348 megabits average. This one, the U6 Lite, came in at 336 megabits average. But keep in mind, $329, $99, right? So, you know, to me, they're close enough in testing that they're about almost exactly the same, but this one's about three times more expensive. Next up, coming in at just exactly 300 megabits per second was the Ubiquiti Nano HD, the 4x4 multi-user MIMO Wi-Fi 5 access point, followed in fourth place with a combined 214 megabits per second, the Ingenious ECW230. And finally, at the bottom of the pack with 202 megabits per second, we have our good old Ubiquiti UAP AC Pro. And going through all of this testing, I mean, again, I've installed hundreds of these UAP AC Pros over the years, but I think this device is now heading into the sunset. When you look at these speed test results, especially you know, the Nano HD, which is another Wi-Fi 5 access point, and it's only about $30 more than this one, the performance speaks for itself, right? At this point, uh, we will probably not be doing any more UAP AC Pro access points. We will send this one off into retirement. So that is all well and good, but these access points are 
price pretty differently, right? There's a pretty wide range of prices from $99 up to $499. So I thought the last fun metric that we could do is basically take my test results here and come up with sort of the best bang for your buck or what is the price per megabit for all of these access points. So let's take a look at that next. And here we go. So best bang for your buck, lower is better in this case because that means it is cheaper per megabit uh, for, for instance, the U6 Lite, right? So coming in at 99 bucks, the U6 Lite ends up being in our testing, 29 cents per megabit is what you're paying for this device. The Nano HD is second place coming in at 60 cents per megabit. Then we have the UAP AC Pro coming in at 73 cents per megabit, followed by the EWS 850 AP coming in at 95 cents per megabit. And then finally at the bottom of the pack here, we have that ECW 230. Again, that one was $500 and, in the, and it came in fourth place overall, right? So the price per megabit of the ECW 230 comes out to $2 and 33 cents per megabit. Now keep in mind that none of this testing is entirely scientific. All of my clients are low-end computers placed in different areas around my house. I was trying to simulate more of a real world environment for like an SMB or like home users. Uh, you know, when you're testing these things for the data sheet, you're testing in a very controlled test environment that is made for testing Wi-Fi. So this is not the most scientific test in the world, but this is how everything's stacked up with my type of testing. So if you guys are interested in doing your own testing, I'm happy to share any of this methodology with you. And I'm really, really curious to see if you guys get the same kind of test results as I do. So contact me at info at crosstalksolutions.com if you're interested in setting up your own tests, because I would love to see other people's test results running very similar tests to what I'm doing here. All right, so there you have it, our benchmark results for these five access points, and I'm looking forward to testing even more access points to see how they stack up against these five. I'm looking forward to testing some of the newer access points from Ubiquiti, the, all the latest Wi-Fi 6 stuff, as well as other access point manufacturers. So I have some Ruckus access points here. I have some Aruba access points here. Uh, TP-Link has reached out to me to take a look at their new line of access points. So I'm looking forward to testing all of these and eventually getting a large set of benchmarks that we can take a look at and compare and contrast. If you guys have suggestions for access points that you would like to see me test, put those down in the comments below. I'd love to see your feedback. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give me a like and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions if you're interested in more content just like this. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.